All right, we're going to dive into pointers a little bit more here and uh, start my little stopwatch. And, uh, you know, I, I could bring up the cam studio here and check time elapsed if I wanted to do that, but it's occasionally disruptive, and, and at a glance I want to have something in front of me just so I know how much time we have left, how much time I've spent, things like that. It's the second time I've had to do this. I went way over the limit in the first one. I don't know what I was thinking, but, I mean, I, I went over it by minutes instead of seconds. So you can see I have all this crap right here. So I'm going to sort of reproduce this a little bit. This is what I had originally. I only had four lines. You can see I, I, I clearly went off on a tangent in the last video that nobody will ever see because it's too large. But we'll get into all this crap. Probably break it up into a couple videos. It's an unfortunate reality that we're going to start getting into some things like assembly script and assembly, assembly instructions and, and programming languages and stuff. Um, that we have to start going over some, some uh, concepts. I've, I've kind of uh, held it off as much as I can. Is this going to turn into a computer science lecture? To some degree, yes. Uh, I've thought about it and thought about it and thought about it, and there's really no way that I can I can get around it. Open up Cheat Engine here real quick. So, I mean, you know, to, to someone who, who's not um, into computer science or programming or, or you know, uh, architecture and, and things like that in general, you know, you're going to open up Cheat Engine. There's going to be a couple basic things you're going to do. You're just going to, you know, process. doesn't matter what we connect to. It's just so long as the functionality is enabled. Yeah, you know, you're going to do scan types, exact value, bigger than, smaller than, value between, unknown initial value. That stuff makes sense. That's generic concepts that we can all deal with. Uh, you know, hex, not hex. Uh, you know, you can go up to Wikipedia. Um, yep. It's uh, a little bit of that. Do, uh, you know, hexadecimal. So you can read about this, and that makes sense. Um so on a general level, you can kind of understand that if you really wanted to. Go on to value type. You know, you got binary value type. You got byte, two byte, you know, eight, float, double string, array of bytes. That, that's probably, you know, the line for most people. You can Wikipedia float, Wikipedia double. Figure out what those mean. Get into array of bytes just to prove the point. You know, what is an array of bytes? Well, you know, we'll go to Wikipedia and we'll just type in array of bytes. It has no idea what we mean. It's going to bring up string. It's going to do AOB. Let's click on AOB, see what that says. Uh, array of bytes. You can see it's not just one article. It's actually two. So you have an array, which is a data structure. Again, you know, this, this is what I mean when I say that in order, in order to get into some of the more advanced stuff, you're forced to get into computer science in a, in a sort of a general way. It'll tell you right here what an array is. It's a data structure. You can read more. What's bytes? It's going to go into state, automata. Digital logic, computer programs, sequential logic, flip flops, latches, accumulators, you know, all types of crazy crap. Nobody needs to really know about flip flops and things like that. Certainly, we're not going to go that. You know, when you're working with Cheat Engine, you never have to know about a flip flop circuit or, um, you know, application specific integrated circuits, you know, none of that crap. But uh, for, for ha ha's, we will uh, click on flip flop, see what it has to say. It's a flip flopper latch is a circuit that has two states that can be used to store state information. It's pretty great. Um, and again, if that's something that interests you, you can read about that. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that when we start getting into pointers um, and things like that, you're going to start getting, you know, you're, again, as I mentioned in an earlier video, you're getting into, uh, you're sort of implicitly agreeing that, you know, yep, I'm on board with complicated concepts such as type coercion, memory locations, bit patterns, signed bits, characters, strings, floating points, doubles, you know, value memories, the value of a memory location, you know, the differences, variables, abstractions over, you know, variables and their abstractions over memory locations, which is just a fancy way of saying variables. You're implicitly admitting that, you know, this is this is stuff that maybe I don't want to deal with it, but this is stuff that I'm okay with dealing with, and there's really no way around it. Is there a way that, you know, we could uh, use Cheat Engine to find uh, values and, you know, make tables so that when we restart the game, it works without having to go through all this computer science garbage? There probably is. You could, uh, you know, if you really wanted to, click on memory view here. It's going to bring up some assembly code, some instructions, a whole lot of crap. You know, again, unless you're well versed, you have no idea what any of this means. But if you really want to fool around, you can go to tools. 
you look at all this, you know, fancy, fancy stuff right here. Dissect window, PE headers. What does that even mean? Who the hell knows? The Ulta map. Boy, doesn't that sound awesome. You go to auto assemble. Um, these are tools that we can use with Cheat Engine, but unless you understand how computers operate on, on some sort of fundamental level, they, you know, it'll be all smoke and mirrors to where you may get the results that you want, but you're never going to know why. So we could go to auto assemble here. It's going to bring up this window. There's nothing in it. You know, I mean, what is that even, what are we even doing? In order to figure that out, you go, you know, say again, you know, you're messing around with values or whatever. Maybe we go to view, we go to preferences, there's not a whole lot there. We go to template, what do we want? We want an API hook, what's an API? Well, you know, an API is something specific that, you know, maybe we'll get into that, but, you know, call a cheat engine Lua function, what does that even mean? Lua is a programming language, it's used in a lot of games. Uh, code injection, we could click that. You know, what, what address do we want to do the jump? Well, it's giving us the process name right here. It's giving us an offset, like we talked about in one of the previous videos, 246C. It's a hex address. It's going to take that hex address. It's going to apply that to whatever the absolute value in memory that service host.exe is located in. We're going to hit OK. And look at all this stuff that we get. It's allocating memory. It's assigning labels. A few comments. Got this, you know, subtract thing here. RSP. It probably refers to a register or something like that. We have a constant value of 28. And we're calling. We're even, you know, doing uh, invoking subroutines here. You know, we're calling something here with another offset here so what it's doing is it's essentially saying you know I want to call a, a function for uh, those who are you know used to see or something like that I want to call a function and that the uh, entrance to that function is located at whatever the absolute value in memory of service host.exe is plus this offset right here it's another label I want to you know hits this label I want to go to jump to return here return here is defined down here and return here is just some some location way the hell out in memory doesn't matter but you know obviously a lot of that stuff right there made no sense and there's a reason why I just went through that even though there's you know odds are it made no sense because I want to illustrate the point that a cheat engine is a mature application does a lot of low-level crazy things and in order to deal with those low-level and crazy things you have to be somewhat well versed in some basics of computer science such as the call stack and the heap and a bit of dynamic memory now we're going to go ahead and highlight these two and delete them now why are we going to do that well because i've thought a lot about how to talk about the call stack and i've thought a lot about how to talk about the heap and there's really no good way that i can sort of segue into it so i'm not even going to bother um for our purposes here we're just going to basically pretend those don't exist if a later video, if, if we're forced to get into it, then, you know, I'll, I'll sort of segue out and say, you know, all right, uh, in order to understand this concept, concept, we have to talk about the call stack and the heap and, you know, dynamic memory allocation and things like that. But at this point, in the foreseeable future, you know, hopefully we won't be forced into that. We can, we can sort of work around it and basically pretend those don't exist. So it'll make our lives a little bit easier. Um, so what else are we supposed to cover but never did? A bit more on dynamic memory. Um, we're getting into that, and we certainly just got into that right now. Um, you know, by by going around and showing assembly and different things like that. Um, and we've actually, I've just brought up all the stuff, but I'm gonna minimize that real quick. We saw that in earlier videos when we found values, and then we would load a game or restart uh, the game itself, and then the the memory addresses no longer had a value that meant what they used to. Um, that's essentially dynamic memory allocation in in, in practice. Um, now, you know, what does it mean? You know, how does it, how, how does it function? Well, in order to get into that, we're going to have to get into variables. And that's what this whole chunk of stuff down here is about. So we want to talk about dynamic memory, how to deal with it, how to find values, how to find memory locations in a, in a sort of, uh, predetermined way, uh, no matter what the absolute value of that memory location is. And, uh, in order to do that, we have to understand the concept of a variable, and um, so we will do that, um, and we will do all of this in the in the next video. But let me just sort of stare at this real quick and, and think about it. We just zipped through a whole lot of stuff, and, and maybe didn't do the best job of uh, of explaining it. But so the essentially what I'm trying to say in this entire video is. We're about to get into some topics. 
that people, unless you're involved in the in the field of computer science, you generally have no business knowing. But there's no way around it because Sheet Engine, on the surface, is an application that anybody can use by selecting a process, searching for a value. You can go from there. You can start changing bits and uh, or changing values, changing bytes, whatever you want to say, and that's great. Anybody can do that. There's no need for anybody to know any of this or anything that we just talked about in order to, to, to use the basic surface functionality of this program. However, once you start changing value types, floats, doubles, you know, whatever, not that complicated. Strings, a little more complicated. Array of bytes, you use this data structure or this uh, value type, data type, whatever you want to say. Requires knowledge of basic computer science. There's no way around it. Um, and there's just no way around it. There's no other way to say it. We will uh, dive into that, into the and and uh, specifically what we're going to deal with in the next videos. We're going to start talking about variables and uh, in the concept of really high level programming languages. It's it's somewhat convenient because we can the concepts that we're trying to illustrate, even though uh, we're illustrating or, or talking about them on an extremely low level in the in the context of cheat engine and bit patterns and things like that, we can illustrate the basic concepts with very high level programming languages. Uh, we'll probably use some pseudo uh, version of Python or something like that when we have to actually look at it. Um, so again, you know, it, it's somewhat convenient because we can illustrate these concepts in a, in a somewhat more concise way. Um, and we will, that's, that's what we're going to dive into in the next video and, and probably in the, in the few after it. So uh, the final point, this is the demarcation line in this video series. Everything before it, if you have no experience at all with computer science or anything like that, you could, you know, you could, you could deal with it. You could uh, get some value out of it and, and whatnot. But from here on out, the agreement between the viewer and me, the producer of these videos, is, yep, I'm on board. I want to understand these computer science concepts. Uh, why do I want to understand them? Well, you know, I can't tell you why you want to, but you know, I'm going to assume that the basic reason you want to understand them is to better use Cheat Engine. Maybe you want to do it out of curiosity. Um, can't tell you why you want to understand this stuff, but it is my duty to inform you that you cannot go any further with this program, or at least I'm putting forth the idea, or the the um, yeah, the idea that you cannot go any further and use Cheat Engine in a more advanced way unless you understand some of these concepts. And again, that's what we'll start getting into in the next uh, couple of videos because it's going to take a few.